of football at ross Aid Stadium Saturday at noon when they take on the Fresno State Bulldogs. When they do, they'll be led out of Tiller Tunnel by 37-year-old head coach Ryan Walters, the 37th head coach in Purdue football history. We are live at Walk-Ons, and it is the Ryan Walters Show. We're going to hear from the head coach a little bit later on here, along with Cadron Jenkins, one of our outside linebackers, and Marcus Bowe, who will be blocking up front on that offensive line. You can follow along tonight if you're on Facebook. We're on the Purdue Athletics site. We're also on the Purdue Football Twitter site. Uh, and Facebook, if you let us know where you're watching, we'll give you a shout-out. If you have questions for the coach, we'll take those as well. So when we come back to walk-ons, we will hear from head coach Ryan Walters. It is the Ryan Walters Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Screws, looks for that pass, it kicked off! Intercepted, and this time Cam Allen will work his way all the way. Touchdown! What a way to start your football game here in week two for the Purdue Boilermakers. Look at Kane flying up, Joe. He jumped out on tape a week ago with his ability to make plays in the run game and the, uh, the ability to hit guys. Look at that helmet on the football. Bob Ball pops up in the air. And how about Cam Allen? You're thinking run, but Purdue's matching their personnel. Look at that box. Look at, look at what you see. Perry. Perry trying. And now the ball came out. It's recovered by Sanusi Kane. Kane came away with it, and he's wrestled down near the 20. Morgan, end zone, intercepted off the hands of Brown Steve. Edge pressure, Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen, his second of the day. He's still going, and out of bounds. In Dustin, you know all too well what's it like to play in these cold weather, big time, big 10 games that'll decide he's not the quarterback. It's Porter again, and he does not get the line to gain. Sanusi. Hello, Purdue fans. This is Johnny DeCamp bringing you play-by-play. -play, the Hi, everybody, Rousey. along with Ron Kramer, this is Pete Van Weeren welcoming you to ross Aid Stadium. Live from ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's a football Saturday in West Lafayette, Indiana, and one of the biggest home games in decades. The Rutgers rush the field. What a night in West Lafayette. Well, welcome back to the Ryan Walter Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Ryan Walter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. We are joined by the head coach who just put a headset on. And Ryan, the next time you put a headset on, you're going to be surrounded by thousands of your closest friends on Saturday and trying to get a football win. So first of all, welcome to the show. And second of all, I, I think I speak for everybody here. We can't wait to get this thing started. No, I appreciate it, man. Thanks you. Thank, first, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, this is awesome. And I uh, can't wait to get it to game day. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the preparation. We talked to, uh, last fall after you had been hired uh, and, and got an update on uh, what you were trying to do to get that first recruiting class put together. Since then, you've had spring practice. Uh, you've had a summer with the players to get stronger. And uh, then you've got a fall camp. So what progress have we seen in this team from last December when we last saw them play till now? Yeah, you know, you talk about last December. So first it was I'm trying, I was trying to gain their respect and, and really learn from them what it was like to be a Boilermaker, right? This, they had already had success playing in the uh, Big Ten Championship game a year ago. And it was, it was my job to get to know them and also get to know the roster in terms of what we needed from a um, competitive standpoint to, to fill holes um, from production that left a year ago. And, you know, I thought our strength and conditioning coach, um, Kiero Small, did a great job uh, through winter workouts and preparing them to play football and spring ball. Uh, we got to spring ball and, and really found out, you know, who we could count on. Um, what what needs we needed from the transfer portal, um, and to the guys' credit, man, like look the you know I got two guys here right now. Everybody in the team was just bought in, like with with blind faith, and they didn't need to do that. 
um, you know, I was, I was very uh, appreciative of that. It, it made the transition very easy. Um, and then after spring ball, we, we sat down and, and discussed, you know, what positions we need to go get in the, in the portal. We were able to do so because of the support um, from administration and from the community. And, you know, then we had uh, summer workouts where guys really dove into the scheme. You know, there were player run practices um, where they were, were on page and, and uh, really dove into the, the installs. And so that allowed us to hit the ground running for fall camp. And that was important because we got a, we got a, a lot of senior guys and a lot of veteran guys, um, but not a lot of guys that have played with each other. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to, to really dive into playing football right from the jump, getting into fall camp, I think we'll play dividends um, coming into the season. You know, things have changed certainly from the time I was in school many, many decades ago. And even when you were a player here, if you came in as a head coach in December, it was going to be tough to get a class together that would be competitive. Now with the portal, it gives you another opportunity to get players from a different area. And the first player you went out and got is a pretty important one because he's going to be your quarterback on Saturday. Yeah, you know, I, obviously with Aiden O'Connell, and you guys saw what he did in, in preseason in the NFL. I mean, he, he was a great player. Um, you know, I, I hated going against him the last two years at, at Illinois as a, as a coordinator. Um, and I just knew that we didn't have any experienced uh, quarterbacks on the roster. So, you know, I'm, I'm as uh, confident as they come and, and pretty naive um, in the sense where I, I figured, you know, we could look at the transfer portal and, and try to get the best guy that was in there. Um, and in my opinion, uh, Hudson Carr was the uh, best quarterback that was in the portal and it wasn't even close. And so I called him and, you know, Went to go see him like the third day on the job and, um, you know, convinced he and his family to, to come on a, a visit and, and he fell in love with this place and, th and this place is awesome. Like, you know, he fell in love with the, the same things that I fell in love with once I got hired here and, and got to know the community, got to see the campus. Um, the academic speaks for itself. Right. Uh, the conference speaks for itself. Uh, so it wasn't, a, it wasn't a hard sell. He just got to, to feel comfortable here, got to feel comfortable with the game plan uh, that Coach Harrell has, had, had presented to him. Um, and I'm glad he's here because he's, he's, uh, he's a good one. Uh, looking at Facebook, we got a boiler up from Lakeway, Texas, which it says is the home of Hudson Card. There so I know go. he's got a lot of fans down there. I think it was pretty informative, Ryan, when you looked at the voting for captain. Here's a guy who just came on campus here less than a year ago, and he got the most votes for you as a captain this year. Yeah, what, what I was impressed with, and uh, these guys will tell you, um, you know, when he, when he came and he decided to come here and we got him here in, in uh, springtime, like he just put his head down and went to work. He he wasn't he wasn't um, you know overbearing. He, he he didn't just think he had the right to the job. He earned the job, and because of his work ethic, because of his rapport uh, with his teammates in the locker room, um, and because of the way he plays, you know he had, he had earned the most votes votes for a captain, and, and that was voted by his for his peers. So. What will we see out of him? We know he can throw the football, but the one thing I keep hearing over and over is his athletic ability and his ability to make plays with his legs as well as his arm. Yeah, I think that's the area of his game that people don't know or don't give him enough credit for. Uh, he is athletic. He, he can make you miss. He can, uh, he can beat you with speed. Um, you know, hopefully he doesn't have to do that a whole lot. You know, I, I keep telling him, you know, I know you're a great football player, but you need to be our quarterback, so go get what you can and get down. Uh, so that, that he can last all season. Um, and obviously his arm talent speaks for itself, but I think the thing that's been most impressive is just his poise, his demeanor, um, his understanding of the game plan and, and be able to get through his reads quickly and, and de deliver the ball on time and deliver it accurately. All right, we need to take a break. This is the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Seven yard touchdown run. And the defensive end for Purdue. Maccabee gets outside with a stiff arm. Maccabee throws a second stiff arm to the pylon. Touchdown. On first down. Wide open is Maccabee. Well designed play and Maccabee is shoved down near the 30. Now you're in four minute offense. Can you close out the game? Maccabee cuts a jagged path across midfield. Nobody in front can they track him down. Devin Maccabee still going, takes it inside. The Working through it again this year. Hands off to Maccabee, who's in for the touchdown. Rob, third down, deciding that now it's game time. Let's get the points on the board here. It's nine turnovers last four games for Purdue. Second drive from the 20. 
O'Connell will roll, checks it down. There's Maccabee, cuts back. Maccabee slips away. Here he goes. And Maccabee finally brought down across the 35-yard line. It's Maccabee right side. Mac and West Lafayette. They go right back to Maccabee. And he's in. Touchdown. Maccabee left side. Makes a cut inside the 10. Another cut. Touchdown, Purdue. Maccabee. Different team when Maccabee's playing. When he's not. Run with your eyes. Watch, he's going to take him outside. Now he's going to cut back to the inside. So you eliminate one defender. And then you take another cut back to the inside, and it's six. Maccabee behind O'Connell. Here they fake the pitch back. Maccabee with running room gets a first down and more. Maccabee hurdling. And he'll be down inside the Michigan 20. Hello, Purdue fans. This is Johnny DeGrand welcoming you to Ross Aid Stadium. From Ross Aid Stadium. It's a football Saturday in West Lafayette. What a night at West Lafayette. Presented by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Earn a degree you're proud of and employers respect. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. We're with head coach Ryan Walters at Walk-Ons. Uh, let's try to catch up here on Facebook. Where our first I'm talking to caller from Boonville. Uh, home of Devin Maccabee, so that's uh, not surprising. Glen Arbor, Michigan, represented Westfield, Canton, Michigan, Charlotte, North Carolina, Champaign, Illinois, Valparaiso, Swamico, Wisconsin. Right here in the room, Jim, thanks for sh sending in. Uh, Indianapolis, Westfield, Indiana, Lakeway, Texas, we mentioned, uh, Michigan again, and I think that catches, oh, Syracuse. Uh, and uh, apparently Matt McCann, who played offensive line here in uh, 2019, it uh, looks like they're going to have a baby due on March 6th. And uh, said dad was an offensive lineman, so I think you got your first recruit for the class of, what, 2045, something like that, 2046. If I'm still here, that means we did a good job. So. <laughs> Uh, we do have a question on here, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Boilermakers, of course, but there is a question about Fresno State. What types of challenges will you see? Are they a run-pass team? Uh, I do know they've lost a lot of talent offensively. Their quarterback, their top running back, and their two top receivers are gone, but you know that uh, uh, Coach Tedford's going to have them ready to play. Absolutely. You know, i got a lot of respect for uh, Jeff Tedford and what he's done in his career. Um, you know, he's an offensive mind, obviously. Um, offensively, they, they did lose a lot of production, but they, they were able to gain some uh, high-level and high-profile players. You know, the quarterback came from UCF. He was a highly touted kid coming out of high school. Um, they've got an, a Boston College transfer to, to play wide out for them. Um, they're they're going to be a tough team. That's, that's just the nature of Fresno. Um, defensively, uh, their defensive coordinator's got 20 years of NFL experience. They were uh, 14th in the country in scoring defense. Um, and, you know, they, they play good good defense. They play good football. That was a, a team that went 1-4 um, to start the season right. and then rattled off nine games and won a conference championship. So that speaks to the culture. Uh, that speaks to the, uh, the camaraderie in the locker room and, and what type of team they are. So um, they're going to come in here and, and give us our best shot. We've got to be ready for it. Um, but but I think our guys are, and I'm, I'm excited to see our guys play. You mentioned Fresno State won its last nine games last season. They bring the third longest winning streak in the country to Ross A. Georgia has 17 wins in a row. Troy has 11. Fresno State at nine, so you got a chance to break the streak right off the bat. Well, let's talk about your team on both sides of the ball, and since you have the defensive mindset or at least defensive reputation, let's start there. Without giving away military secrets here, can you explain to the crowd what your defense does to make the – life difficult for opposing offenses. Yeah, I think what we do is unique, and I can say that because, you know, I was the architect, right? Um, <laughs> and so, you know, what, what we'll do is we, we want to stop explosive plays, so we put uh, safety right in the middle of the field, sitting at 25 yards. He's not there to call a fair catch for a punt, I promise you. <laughs> um, um, and so, you know, and from my perspective, because I grew up playing quarterback, you know, I learned the game from an offensive uh, point of view. And so, you know, offensively, you know, all the throws and all the things that you want that are easier in the middle of the field. So we try to take that away. Um, and then a the run game, you know, you, you, you want to be able to have double teams and combo up to backers. And so our front is designed to where, you know, you get one-on-one -on -one blocks. And so our second-level defenders are, are free. Um, you know, uh, offensively, if, if everything is caught up in the middle, you want to be able to go on the outside. So we got two guys that are on the line scrimmage on the outside. Um, and then from a uh, coordinator's perspective, if I'm an offensive coordinator, I want to be able to see safety rotation. Um, I want to be able to, to see what the defense is going to give me. 
um, pre-snap. And so pre-snap, we look the same. Mm -hmm. And we, we get to things um, in different calls and different pressures and different stunts post-snap. So the whole thought process from my point of view is I don't want to play against the offensive coordinator. I want to play against the quarterback. Um, that's the most important position in, sp in sports period. So the more we can confuse and harass him, um, and get him to hold the ball for a second longer, then the more we can let our guys up front go eat um, and be advantageous when the ball gets uh, put in the air. A couple of those guys up front that want to eat. One is here tonight. Uh, we mentioned that Cajun Jenkins will be ta talking with us. Also, you got Nick Scorton on the other side. I think those guys are really primed to have big seasons. Yeah, absolutely, and we're counting on them too. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that practice habits become game day reality. Uh, and those guys, those guys get after it at practice. And so I'm excited to cut them loose. You know, I've, I have been, a, <laughs> I've been overly emphasized on, on staying off the quarterback in practice, as you can imagine. Um, so I know those guys will be seeing red, um, you know, literally on yeah. game day. Uh, another guy that I think we're really anxious to see because we've seen both of his brothers play here, Jacob Thieneman and Brennan Thieneman had a long and, and storied career as Boilermaker defenders, and now uh, their little brother uh, is going to come in, uh, and Dylan thieneman has got a starting role for you. Yeah, and, you know, I got a chance to meet both brothers, um, you know, about a month ago, and I can guarantee you Dylan is better than them. <laughs> um, they would probably admit that too, I They think. would. If, 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 they could, if they could run like Dylan, they'd still be playing, so... Uh, what, I, what I appreciate about Dylan is he, he's, not a, he's not afraid. He's, um, you know, I don't know if it's because he's young. He just doesn't know any better. Um, but you look at him, you know, he's, he's six foot plus. He's 205 plus. He's the second fastest kid we got on the team. He's got a great work ethic. He's physical. He understands the game because his older brothers, mm -hmm. right? Um, so he's got the pedigree. And they were there. really smart players. Absolutely. And, and so is he. So he's just always around the football. Um, nothing ever really rattles him. And, and he's got a good com command and understanding of the defense. Uh, I think it was hugely beneficial to have him in spring ball so he could get the install just as, as everybody else did. Um, but I think it's, you know, he's, he's earned the respect of, of the guys he's playing with. And so, you know, the, what I love about football is the ultimate equalizer. Like, once you step in between the white lines, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what your background is, you know, what your socioeconomic stat status is, what your, you know, your ethnic heritage is. It's what happens between snap and whistle. And... Um, Dylan earned the right to be a starter. All right, we've talked about the defensive side. We'll flip over to the offensive side after this. It's the Ryan Walter Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Screws looks for that pass. It picked off. Intercepted, and this time Cam Allen will work his way all the way. Touchdown. What a way to start your football game here in week two for the Purdue Boilermakers. Look at Kane flying up, Joe. He jumped out on tape a week ago with his ability to make plays in the run game and the, uh, the ability to hit guys. Look at that helmet on the football. Bob, ball pops up in the air. And how about Cam Allen? You're thinking run, but Purdue's matching their personnel. Look at that box. Look at, look at what you see. Perry. Perry trying. And now the ball came out. It's recovered by Sanusi Kane. Kane came away with it, and he's wrestled down near the 20. Morgan, end zone, intercepted off the hands of Brown Steve. Edge pressure, Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen, his second of the day. He's still going and out of bounds. In Dustin, you know all too well what's it like to play in these cold weather, big time, big 10 games that'll decide he's not the quarterback. It's Porter again. And he does not get the line to gain. Sanusi. Hello, Purdue fans. This is Johnny DeCamp bringing you play-by-play -play the Rouse. Hi, everybody, Rouse. along with Ron Kramer, this is Pete Van Weeren welcoming you to ross Aid Stadium. Live from ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's a football Saturday in West Lafayette, Indiana, and one of the biggest home games in decades. World of Rutgers rush the field. What a night in West Lafayette.
Welcome back to the Ryan Walter Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time. Boilermakers in Fresno State at noon on Saturday. Our pregame coverage starts at 11, and you can join us on Facebook Live on the Purdue Athletics site. We'll have a half-hour preview starting at 10.30. Pete Quinn and Kelly Kitchell will join me for that. Uh, Shout-outs on Facebook tonight again to Martinsville, Indiana. Uh, Tom says he's looking forward to seeing the Boilers play at Virginia Tech. We'll be talking about the Hokies next week. Put to go to Florida checking in. Hopefully everybody that we have down in Florida is safe after the hurricane went through there earlier today. Albuquerque, New Mexico checks in. Lance Olson from the 1967 Rose Bowl team wishing the Boilermakers success. Uh, my house is listening. That's a good thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Colorado Springs is in there tonight. Indianapolis. And we'll get the rest in uh, just a minute. Uh, so let's go offensively. We talked a little bit about Hudson Card. Uh, you had the opportunity uh, to try to tackle Devin Mockaby last year, yeah. and, and as many others did and tried, uh, it was not very successful. He's pretty good. Yeah, that's why the you know first thing I did was offer him a scholarship when I got the job here. Um, I, I saw how difficult the, the challenge was to prepare for him. Um, you know, obviously he, he proved himself through the uh, the course of the Big Ten season. Um, and he's only gotten better, you know. I, like I, I keep singing uh, Carol Small's praise and uh, what he's been able to do with with the locker room and, and really changing their bodies and um, preparing them for a, a Big Ten schedule. And you know, Devin Mockaby is a is a result of that. And he's he's gained weight. He's um, he's still as elusive as as ever. And I think what we do offensively will will showcase uh, his his ability along with the other. Uh, two running backs. I call that that room the three-headed monster because uh, you know all three of those guys complement each other well and um, are are good players. Uh, Marcus Bo is going to join us a little bit later on. The offensive line, of course, the key to anything. You got to have time for your quarterback and you got to have holes for your running back. What have you seen from that line that you like? Yeah, you know, with Marcus leading the the uh, the way, you know, and kudos to Marcus. You know, he has um really grown up in in the you know since i've been here in december you know, taking on a leadership role uh, really attacking the workouts and and owning them um you know he's he's been um impressive this fall camp and consistent um and, and been ultra competitive and, and i can't wait for him to to beat up on somebody else other than our, our own team so um really excited about what that group brings to the table and hudson is in in the rest of our offense is in good hands with those guys up front Last year, Charlie Jones was the primary receiver for Aiden O'Connell, and we see we're going to watch Charlie play on Sundays now. Maybe a little bit more balanced attack this year, and what are some of the players that we should be watching for at that wide receiver spot? Yeah, you know, the beauty of, of the, our offensive scheme is that the ball gets spread around. It's just the, the concepts that we use um, and the, the answers um, based on what coverage we're seeing, the, the ball gets spit out in different areas, and, and because Hudson is as... Um, high football IQ as he as he is, th th it gets spread to the to the right guys. And so, uh, you talk about Abdur, uh, Yassin, you talk about Dion uh, Burks, uh, you talk about uh, Marshawn Rice, uh, T.J. Sheffield, and then our tight ends. Mm -hmm. I think our tight end room is is um, as versatile as athletic as I've as I've seen um, with Max and Drew, and, and obviously when we get Garrett back. Uh, so I'm really excited about seeing those guys catch the ball in space and being able to, to make plays down the field. You mentioned that one of your priorities when you got here was to get Hudson Card. Another priority when you got to campus was to get Graham Harrell to run this offense. Yeah. I asked you a little bit about the philosophy of your defense. What does the air raid, or at least his version of the air raid offense, present to defensive coordinators? Yeah, you know, I think what's, what has been interesting is, you know, you take the, the Hal Mummy and Mike Leach original air raid, and then all the guys that have came from that, you know, your Lincoln, Ride, Lincoln Riley, uh, your Dana Holgersons, your Sonny Dykes, your Seth Latrells, your Graham Harrells, um, you know, all, and all those Garrett Rileys, all those guys have sort of morphed into their own identities, but I think the philosophically the thing that remains the same is you get good at what your roster is good at, and you find answers with, within those concepts, and uh, so you're not pigeonholed into, you know, one, one style or one... Um, ratio run the pass it's it's just you get good at what you're good at and I think Graham's done a good job of that at identifying uh, where our strengths are offensively and being able to exploit that uh, based on what uh, what um, picture that is presented from a defensive perspective I don't want to leave special teams out of the mix because I know you're counting a lot on Ben Freehill who's got a big leg he's a transfer 
from Oklahoma State. We've seen him on kickoffs, but we haven't seen him kick the football through the uprights. Got a big leg. He definitely does. Um, and, you know, I always joke with him when I, when I got the job, you know, people were like, man, you, you might need to go get a kicker. And I don't think we needed to get a kicker because he was right in the building. Um, he's as consistent as I've been around. Um, like you said, he got a big leg. It really pops off his foot. Um, and he is confident right now. So I'm excited to, um, you know, he, he probably is going to be one of our top, you know, leading uh, scorers at the end of the season. You know, a lot of people don't pay attention to it, but I know coaches do. You've got a new snapper and a new holder from a season ago, uh, Nick Davis and Brendan Cropsey. And, uh, you know, the best thing, they're like umpires in baseball. If you don't say anything about them, they're doing a great job. If we don't talk about the holder and the snapper, they did their job. Absolutely, and I haven't had to talk about them in, uh, during fall camp and spring ball, so they're, they've been doing their, their job um, very well. And Jack Ansel back to punt again. Uh, the Australian, after a couple of seasons, I think he's finally gotten his sea legs under him. Absolutely. He's, you know, he sounds like Chris Hemsworth. I always give him a hard time. <laughs> Does um, he look like him? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he probably wishes so. Um, but, you know, he, do, he does a great job. He's very uh, creative and um, and and versatile, you know, when the ball comes off his foot and, and be able to do different things in a punting game. All right, we're going to let the coach walk around the room here for, you for, for a few minutes. When we come back, we'll hear from Cadron Jenkins, one of our outside linebackers. It is the Ryan Walter Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Box. There, go, there they go again. Same, same play, opposite side. Flips it. Mockaby turns the corner. There goes Crazy Legs, tiptoeing. And West Lafayette. They go right back to Mockaby, and he's in! Touchdown! Per the penalty negates the interception. Purdue stays on the field. O'Connell floats it. It's caught! Touchdown, Charlie Jones! O'Connell. Rolling left, floats back in the end zone. Jump ball! It was caught! Touchdown, Purdue! Play action, O'Connell, it's caught, Payne Durham dragging a man all the way for a Purdue touchdown! Late touchdown signal given, Payne Durham muscling. Critical third and five, DeVito throws quickly, batted ball, it's intercepted! We are joined now by Dale Samuels, who led the Boilermakers to that 1952 Big Ten Championship. Dale, we really appreciate you uh, taking some time to, to sit and talk with us about your days at Purdue. Going into the last week, uh, just realizing that the Indiana game for all of us seniors would be the last time we'd be playing in Ross Edge Stadium. And that, that's pretty sentimental to begin with. And... Uh, knowing that we had to win to at least tie for the Big Ten Championship, put a little more pressure on the game. And we woke up in the morning and it was pouring rain and didn't stop. What was it about those days and, and working with, you know, uh, th that coaching staff that really kind of unlocked the offense for you? Yeah, well, uh, Stu Holcomb, our head coach, was pretty progressive and, uh, he liked to score as quick as he could. For Purdue after a gain of three. O'Connell looking left throws. There's Charlie Jones in space. Charlie Jones is free. Charlie Jones across midfield. And tripped up inside the 40. Five receptions this season. Has two tonight. O'Connell to Durham. Goal line. Power. Touchdown Purdue. Lockaby picks up the blitz, O'Connell time, Jones wide open, inside the 10, touchdown Purdue. Base left, rolling in his own end zone, trying to keep the play alive and now throws, that's caught nowhere near the line of the game by Bennett, and he has the ball ripped away by Corey Trice, and it's a touchdown for Purdue. Blocker in the box. There, go, there they go again. Same, same play opposite side. Flips it. Mockaby turns the corner. Gold Club, who support Purdue Athletics through their sponsorship at the highest level. Black and Gold Club members include Indiana Packers, Molson Coors, Purdue Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, Rorman Automotive Group, and Wabash. Each are great partners 
of Purdue Athletics. Boilermakers and Fresno State Saturday, and one of the guys that will be lining up against the Bulldogs is Cadron Jenkins. He's a senior from Louisville, Georgia, an outside linebacker. And, you know, we mentioned the hurricane a little bit before. Now, the hurricane went from Florida through Georgia. Is it, do you know if it was close to where your hometown is? No, it was, it was like... I think it was a couple miles, well, miles away. So, so good deal. So no yeah, worries about no, the family no today. All right. Again, uh, our best to those who might be watching us today from down in the southern part of the country. All right. The first thing people are going to notice, Cadron, when they come out to watch you on Saturday, he's got a different number this year. He went from 44 to 4. Uh, what was the reason? Um, so in high school, all the way up to my senior year, I had number 44, and then I changed to 4. So when I got in college, I felt like I wanted to do the same thing, go 44 for three years, then my senior year go four. There you go. As, you know, the, the single numbers seem to have the more the prestige, right? I mean, yeah. Everybody wants to have those single <laughs> numbers on their back. Uh, you had an outstanding season last year, honorable mention, all Big Ten. Talk about the new defensive structure that you're in. We talked to the coach about this, this defense that he's come up with. Uh, how, do, how have you taken it to? What do you like the most about this scheme? Well, the scheme is very versatile. I get to get in coverage a little bit, cover more people, but I also get to rush the pass a lot. So the most exciting thing to me is rushing the passer and just getting, getting off the ball and getting to the quarterback. You know, I heard you after one of the practices this year, we were talking to Nick Scorton, who's on the other side, and I think you guys were having a bet about maybe he was going to get the first quarterback sack on the season. Uh I, I might put my bet on you. Yeah, I told him. Actually, me and him bet it like a hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> who would get the first set? Play money. Play money. <laughs> Play money. It was just. Play. It was a joke. <laughs> but yeah, we um, yeah, definitely. I I feel like both of us ready ready for Saturday, and we're ready to just get after it. I may have talked to you about this last year, but I know you were a running back and a kick returner in high school. Have you lobbied Coach Walters and the staff to let you try either of those here, or are you, you stuck on that defensive side now? I'm stuck on that there defensive you go. side now. That's all right. Put your hand in the dirt and get after somebody. Yeah, definitely. You know, a lot of changes in ross Aid Stadium. Uh, one of the changes is going to be how you get into the on, on the playing field with the new Tiller Tunnel. I think you had a chance to walk through it. What's that going to be like on Saturday when the place is filled up? Oh, it's going to be special. I'm, I'm ready actually like when we walked out there last I think it was Friday or Saturday it felt good and I'm just ready to get out there and just have fun you know it is a, it's a lot easier trip than also from the locker room you don't have to go down the street and and I think the most important thing you don't have to cross with the other right. team and we've seen last year we saw the game at Illinois some 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 words were exchanged yeah. on, on the way coming out of the locker room at halftime so you can, you can get rid of that uh, thing right away uh, let's talk about your new coach. Your, your uh, coach on the outside linebackers, Coach Deneen. Uh, how is he different, or what, what kinds of things has he brought to your, uh, your uh, meeting room? Oh, he's a good guy. He, he's a young coach, but he definitely get on us during practice and make sure that we're doing our job and doing the right thing and being in the right position to make plays. So I think he's been doing a good job as well. One of the things I hear from a lot of players, this coaching staff that's brought in, including the head coach, is a very young staff and very easy to relate to. Have you found that to be the case with all of the coaches? Oh, yeah, pretty much all the coaches are pretty cool. So, And they're young, and they really get us as, like, players. So I like it. We talk all the time in the summertime about players having to get in the weight room and get stronger. Do you have any time away between the, t the time the season ends, you have spring practice, then you come back? Do you get to do anything fun in the summertime besides play football? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I went home for like a week, but that's it, and it wasn't nothing, so... No, not get, really. Did you get a good week of home cooking while you were there? Yeah, I did. I did. My right. mom cooked for me. Like, now, all right. <laughs> what, what, would the, what would the table be like? If you're home for a week, what's she going to put on that table that's going to make you the happiest? Um, mac and cheese, collard greens, dressing, turkey, um, anything I ask for, really. All right. And, <laughs> and your strength coach and everybody's going to approve of all that, right? That's all, yeah, that's yeah. all, all endorsed. All right. Uh, let's talk about the season. You start with Fresno State, but then you've got Virginia Tech. You've got Syracuse, Ohio State, Michigan back on the schedule. I mean, this is one of the toughest schedules in the country, but I would think you'd be excited about that challenge of playing against the best. Yeah, I'm excited to go against the competition and all the players that we're going to go against, the good players at that. And it, it got me excited because I want to see my talent going against their talent. So 
I'm very excited for that. All right, everybody remember number four, not number 44. And when he hits the quarterback, you'll know, hey, I heard that guy on the radio <laughs> on the Thursday night. Good luck this All year, right. Cadron, and uh, let's get the Boilermakers some wins. Thank you. All right, we're going to hear from Marcus Bow coming up next. This is the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Screws. Looks for that pass. It picked off. Intercepted, and this time Cam Allen will work his way all the way. Touchdown. What a way to start your football game here in week two for the Purdue Boilermakers. Look at Kane flying up, Joe. He jumped out on tape a week ago with his ability to make plays in the run game and the, uh, the ability to hit guys. Look at that helmet on the football. Bob Ball pops up in the air. And how about Cam Allen? You're thinking run, but Purdue's matching their personnel. Look at that box. Look at, look at what you see. Perry. Perry trying. And now the ball came out. It's a long it's recovered by Sanusi Kane. Kane came away with it, and he's wrestled down near the 20. Morgan, end zone, intercepted off the hands of Brown Steve. Edge pressure, Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen, his second of the day. He's still going, and out of bounds. In Dustin, you know all too well what's it like to play in these cold weather, big time, big 10 games that'll decide he's not the quarterback. It's Porter again, and he does not get the line to gain. Sanusi. Hello, Purdue fans. This is Johnny DeCamp bringing you play-by-play -play the Rouse. Everybody, along with Ron Kramer, this is Pete Van Weeren welcoming you to ross Aid Live Stadium. from ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's a football Saturday in West Lafayette, Indiana, and one of the biggest home games in decades. World records rush the field. What a night in West Lafayette. Well, welcome back to the Ryan Walter Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student-athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both are Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler-made. Teams are still making roster moves to get down to the 53 players that they need. To, uh, the Tuesday was the cutoff yesterday, but now players getting waived and picked up. So uh, we don't know exactly how many Purdue players will be on rosters when the season starts next week. One we know, though, will be uh, in his lineup, or at least on, on the sidelines, is Aiden O'Connell, because he may have been the talk of the NFL during the preseason camps. Playing for the Las Vegas Raiders, he completed 41 of 58 passes, 71%. Three touchdowns, no interceptions, and he led his team on six touchdown drives, and he was actually named the player of the week in the first week of the preseason. So not surprisingly, Aiden O'Connell really tearing it up at the next level. Uh, Marcus, you had a chance to uh, block for him yes, and, and play with him. Uh, does that surprise you at all that he's had success? Honestly, no. I know Aiden as a person, as a player. I know he's a, he's a genuine person, and he works his tail off, and he's always going to give it his effort, and he's going to give it his best when he steps on the field. So knowing Aiden, I just... I'm so happy for him to see him doing the things I expected him to do. You know what I'm saying? Now you got another guy that follows in his footsteps in Hudson Card, and I think he's come in and made an immediate impact both on and off the field. No, for sure. Hudson's a, Hudson's a special talent, and I'm very excited to get to start playing with him here soon. Marcus Bow with us. He's a, a sophomore from Milwaukee playing uh, right tackle. Yes, sir. Uh, honorable mention, all Big Ten selection a year ago, so congratulations on that. You know, one of Thank the you. things we saw that we haven't seen in a long time is, is nearly a 1,000-yard rusher at Purdue. Uh, Devin Mockaby fell just short of that mark, and I know that's probably one of his and your goals this year. Offensive linemen love to run block, don't they? Oh, for sure. You love just moving somebody when they, when they don't want you to. It and, just feels great. And you can wear people down. I think that has to be the best feeling to know that when, when you've got them on their heels and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they don't know what's coming, but when you can just road grade them back into the, into the backfield a ways. Yeah, especially when you just do it over the course of the game and just keep going and going. And uh, especially with the work this offseason that we put in with our strength coach, Coach Rowe, I feel like he's putting us in a good spot to finish games one first quarter through the fourth. 
I asked Cajun earlier about his new assistant coach uh, on that side of the ball. How about yours, Marcus Johnson, the new offensive line coach? What are some of the things you've been able to pick up from him in his time here? You know, uh, Coach Johnson, I think he's a phenomenal coach. I really respect Coach Johnson and uh, the fact that he's played, been around the game for a long time. He's played a lot of football. He played at the pro level. He's got a lot of good tips, and he's, got, he's a good leader for our room. And I feel like he'll take us very far this season. Coach Walter seems to have really uh, attached himself to the players on this team very well. How is the bonding process, and uh, are we seeing accurately what we think we're seeing when we see this team being very close? You know, I think, I think you guys are. I mean, the stuff that we do is together as uh, teammates and the bonding that we do as a group, I honestly feel like it's a, it's a special group we got, a special feeling going into the season, and I'm super pumped, and I'm so ready for it. You know, we talked to the coach earlier about the fact that the transfer portal can change things and you can plug holes that way. Offensive line, though, is a not, you've got to have a lot of cohesion on the offensive oh, yeah. line. How difficult is it when you bring a guy in, let's say, in January or February, and now you've got to get him up to speed? Because you've got a few mm -hmm. guys on the line that played elsewhere last season. No, yeah, it's definitely different. You've got to have, you gotta have experience and you've got to have togetherness when playing O-line. So it's been a challenge, but that's what spring ball and camp for, is for, you know, getting together and working through that so you're ready to come when the season comes together. And I think we've been doing a great job with that. We've mentioned a few times you'll be coming out a different area here this year at the Tiller Tunnel. Uh, have you envisioned what it's going to be like running through that with thousands of people I'm around so you? I'm so excited. I can't wait for all of our fans to be there. I honestly think we have the uh, best set of the fans in the country. So I'm just so excited to just run out of that stadium for the first time and see everybody just going crazy. Now, Cajun said he didn't get home very much, maybe just a week. You're a lot closer in Milwaukee. How much did you get home in the summer, and uh, were you able to do anything outside of football? Uh, I got home a little bit. Honestly, this uh, offseason has been dedicated a lot to getting better and getting ready for the season. But, you know, I got home a little bit, see my family, see my little sisters, and had a little bit of fun. But mostly I've been locked in, staying here ready for Saturday. All right, when you go home, what's your, uh, what's your ideal meal? What, what do you ask for when you get to the, to the homestead? Uh, usually, I like when my mom makes some chicken pot pie or my dad makes some orange chicken from scratch. Sounds pretty good. Uh, Crazy. Let's talk about this season in general. It's going to be a challenge, but uh, with challenge comes great opportunity. You're going to play some of the best teams in the country, and Purdue has a chance again to make a statement this season. Yeah, and for sure. You know, uh, we looked at our schedule as soon as it came out, and Obviously, no we scared of anybody. We were just excited for adversity, and handling adversity as a group is what we're for. And that's what we like to do is just, you know, handle adversity together and do it well coached. You know what I'm saying? I so. do know what you're saying. And, and uh, the one thing I like, we got some throwback uniforms this year that go back to the last Purdue Rose Bowl team. You know that Purdue Rose Bowl team in 2000, all five offensive linemen not only played in the NFL, they all played in a Super Bowl. Mm. So there's something for your group to aspire to. Maybe it's the jersey that'll propel you yeah. a little bit. Honestly, you know, add a little bit of spice to it. Spice to the season, a little bit of juice to it. You feel me? All right. Marcus, uh, congratulations on your play last season. We look forward to seeing you this Saturday and uh, kick, some, kick some rear round on the other side of the line this year. For sure. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to get the head coach back with us when we come back. It's the Ryan Walter Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Seven-yard touchdown run. And the defensive end for Purdue. Maccabee gets outside with a stiff arm. Maccabee throws a second stiff arm to the pylon. Touchdown. On first down. Wide open is Maccabee. Well-designed play, and Maccabee is shoved down near the 30. Right now you're in four-minute offense. Can you close out the game? Maccabee. Cuts a jagged path across midfield. Nobody in front. Can they track him down? Devin Maccabee still going. Takes it inside. The Working through it again this year. Hands off to Maccabee. He's in for the touchdown. Rob, third down, deciding that now it's game time. Let's get the points on the board here. It's nine turnovers last four games for Purdue. Second drive from the 20. O'Connell will roll, checks it down. There's Maccabee, cuts back. Maccabee slips away. Here he goes. And Maccabee finally brought down across the 35-yard line. It's Maccabee right side. Mac and West Lafayette. They go right back to Maccabee. And he's in. Touchdown. Maccabee left side. Makes a cut inside the 10. Another cut. Different team when Maccabee's playing. When he's not, you don't get any of this. Run with your eyes. Watch, he's going to take him outside. Now he's going to cut back to the inside. So you eliminate one defender. And then you take another cut back to the inside, and it's six. Maccabee 
behind O'Connell. Here they fake the pitch back. Mockaby with running room gets a first down and more. Mockaby hurdling. And it'll be down inside the Michigan 20. Hello, Purdue fans. This is Johnny DeGrand welcoming you to Ross Aid Stadium. From Ross Aid Stadium. It's a football Saturday in West Lafayette. What a night in West Lafayette. Supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Ryan Walter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Warman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Five captains this year. We've mentioned that Hudson Card was one of the leading vote getters uh, on the offensive side. T.J. Sheffield and Gus Hartwig, who won't start the season on the field, but we hope to see him soon. Sanusi Kane and Nick Scorton, those five guys are going to lead what we hope is a very productive team in 2023. Yeah, I thought the uh, locker room, and there were the other guys that got a lot of votes, you know, um, in particular, you know, Cam Allen, uh, Tyrone Tracy. Um, you know, they were, they were right there. You just can't have a bunch of them, right, you know what I mean? right. Um, so it speaks to the leadership of our, our team and in the locker room um, and really everybody being on the same page. Uh, we got a boiler up from somebody in Notre Dame country, uh, also from Borden, Indiana. We do have a question here. What's, can you talk about some of the changes you have made either in academics, strength and conditioning, or nutrition? Those are areas away from the football field, but that have a big impact on what happens on the football field. Yeah, um, you know, academically, we restructured – um, the setup, you know, there's a Sam Love is in charge of academics now. She was not in the past. Um, our nutrition team has, has done a great job of partnering up with Kiro Small, who's obviously a, a new strength and conditioning coach. So anytime you have new leaders of those different departments, you're going to have a new everything. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think our, our guys can speak to that. And I'm just telling, <laughs> telling you how different it is and, and um, hopefully how beneficial it is. Uh, one guy, unfortunately, we won't see on the sideline, but you will remember him this season, Doug Borsma, our uh, associate athletic director uh, in charge of sports performance who, who died unexpectedly earlier yeah. this year. Uh, great loss. You're going to have a helmet decal that has him uh, fishing, which is where, where really one of his great pastimes away from the field, but we're going to miss Doug around the athletic complex. Absolutely. You know, that was a, a tragic deal for, you know, he and his family, or for, you know. Um, you know, I, I had foot surgery after spring ball, um, or right before spring ball, and uh, the day before he passed, he was he was doing my rehab, and so we were talking about what he was going to do for the Fourth of July, and um, you talk about a, a family man and a man that was uh, highly respected um, amongst the Purdue faithful. Um, you know he'll be he'll be sorely missed for sure. You mentioned the fact that most of you guys are going to get to the field okay. Uh, we've got a couple guys like Garrett Miller and Gus Hartwick who will be with us later. One guy that won't be, though, one of your leading uh, receivers. Uh, unfortunately, we lost him to injury, but the good news is he'll be back for future seasons. Yeah, Jamal, you're talking to, um, you know, a guy that we brought from uh, FAU, and, you know, he's 6'3 plus, um, you know, looks like, a, like he was sculpted. And, um, you know, can run like a deer, had, had great ball skills. Uh, we were really poised to uh, – he was, he was really poised to have a really good season. Um, but, you know, he's – obviously he got, got hurt and he's, attacked, he's attacking his rehab right now. And we're lucky that that room was, was probably our deepest on the, on the roster. So we'll be, we'll be just fine. You know, we talked with both players about the schedule. And uh, you're up for the challenge, but it does make – you really be on point from day one and even before day one because you've got to be ready to go against a very tough September schedule. Absolutely. And we set, you know, <clears throat> we, because of the schedule, we set up our our summer conditioning the way we did and really our practice setup the way we did so we can hit the ground running. There's there's no room to ease into it. Um, you talk about game one, you're, you're playing as a conference champion. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that's the only non Power Five team we're playing against, and then our, our two cross, crossover games are Ohio State and Michigan, um, and then you got the, just the, your normal Big Ten schedule as it is. So um, a lot of people look at it as a, as a challenge, and I think our guys and our staff have looked at it as an opportunity to do something special. I think I asked you this question back in December when we were here, but I'll ask it again. What led you, or what now that you've been on the job a few months, what have you enjoyed the most? What do you appreciate the most about being here at Purdue? You know. I, I didn't know a lot about Purdue before I took the job. Obviously, I, I had played here um, in, in 2021, and I just remember it being like an 11 a.m. kickoff, and the crowd was already here at warm-ups. And I'm yeah. like, what is going on? Like, we were both like 500 teams at the time, and an hour and a half away, we couldn't get anybody in the stands. So um, it spoke to the uh, community here. Um, I didn't realize how how – 
beautiful this place was, this this campus was. I didn't realize how um, how awesome the community was and how you could really get to do whatever you wanted to do. And, you know, it's, it's big enough to where it feels like it's a, a city, but it's small enough to where the university is like the focal point. Um, I had no idea about the facilities. I had no idea about the leadership. Um, and so, you know, it was a, it, I fell in love with the place and it's been awesome. Well, clearly you have been able to explain that uh, magic to recruits coming in next year. And we can't talk about specifics, but I think it's safe to say you're off to a pretty good start with the class of 2024. Yeah, we've identified some guys that we think can, can help us go into championship, and that's the goal here. Um, it should always be the goal here. And, you know, I, what I like about the class that's, that's coming together is they all love football, and that is exactly what our locker room looks like right now. And, you know, it, it's still early, and signing day is until December, so we got a lot of work to do, and uh, we still got some, some guys to add you know, that are silently committed right now that I think people will be excited about as well. All right, we'll have the final segment of the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Screws looks for that pass. It's picked off. Intercepted, and this time Cam Allen will work his way all the way. Touchdown. What a way to start your football game here in week two for the Purdue Boilermakers. Look at Kane flying up, Joe. He jumped out on tape a week ago with his ability to make plays in the run game and the, uh, the ability to hit guys. Look at that helmet on the football. Bob Ball pops up in the air. And how about Cam Allen? You're thinking run, but Purdue's matching their personnel. Look at that box. Look at, look at what you see. Perry. Perry trying. And now the ball came out. It's recovered by Sanusi Kane. Kane came away with it, and he's wrestled down near the 20. Morgan, end zone, intercepted off the hands of Brown Steve. Edge pressure, Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen, his second of the day. He's still going and out of bounds. In Dustin, you know all too well what's it like to play in these cold weather, big time, big 10 games that'll decide he's not the quarterback. It's Porter again. And he does not get the line to gain. Sanusi. Hello, Purdue fans. This is Johnny DeCamp bringing you play by play the rousing. Hi, everybody, Rousey. along with Ron Kramer, this is Pete Van Weeren welcoming you to Ross Aid Stadium. Hi, from Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's a football Saturday in West Lafayette, Indiana, and one of the biggest home games in decades. Boilermakers rush the field. What a night in West Lafayette. The 2023 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Earn a degree you're proud of and employers respect. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Uh, the Boilermakers in Fresno State kicking off at noon on uh, Saturday. It is the 100th season of football at ross Aid Stadium, so we're looking forward to that. Rule changes, and we're going to th see a few rule changes, mostly on the timing uh, one is pretty minor. Uh, in the past, we've seen if there were penalties on the last play of the first and third quarter, they would play an untimed down. That is no longer going to be the case. So they're hoping to eliminate maybe a play or two that way. Second change is you can't uh, take consecutive timeouts anymore. We've seen a lot of times if you have three timeouts left and it's late in the game, you take the consecutive timeouts to ice the kicker. Can't do that anymore. The biggest change, though, Ryan, the clock is not going to stop anymore on first downs until the last two minutes of each half. The idea is they're trying to shorten the game somewhat, have less plays. It's a player safety and, frankly, a TV scheduling issue. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because um, it's going to reduce the amount of plays by, like, 10, you know. Um, so you're talking about player safety and reducing games by, like, 10 plays, but you're adding a 12-team playoff. So yeah. it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but a lot of things the NCAA does doesn't make sense. We talked a little bit about Fresno State earlier, but let's uh, get into more details because we know they've got a quarterback in Mikey Keene who had really good success at Central Florida. He was winning games down there. I think they went to a more running-style quarterback. 
but this is a guy that can throw the ball around the place. Yeah, he can throw it, and, you know, he, he can move the ball with his legs, too. It's just the guy they have at, at Central Florida is, like, elite on the ground. Yeah. Um, but you talk about a guy that, that um, has played winning football since he was in high school. Um, it was highly touted coming out and, and delivers a, a nice catchable ball and he's, he's accurate um, and has high football IQ. So, um, the, and the scheme really fits what, what he is good at. And so, like I said, we'll, we'll have our hands uh, full trying to stop them and uh, what they do offensively. You know, like I said, they're, they're conference champions for a reason. Let's go back one more time on Facebook to make sure we've got everybody covered. We've got Denver, Colorado, Huntsville, Alabama, Hillsdale, Michigan. West Palm Beach and Kokomo, Indiana. I think that's about it for that uh, uh, segment. And we, again, thank everybody. We'll be here ba right back here next week at 6 o'clock on these same Learfield stations. Uh, you know, I asked you this earlier in the week, but uh, I wonder how many times in your mind you've run through that Tiller Tunnel <laughs> as the head coach of a Power 5 football team with a 50,000, 55, whatever it's going to be on Saturday, 1,000 fans. Have you allowed yourself to, to envision that? Uh, a whole lot more here lately. Um, <laughs> I was I was teasing, you know, some of our staff members. I, it's been a long time since I've been nervous uh, for a game, and and just for a brief moment yesterday, just just very brief, I was like, man, I'm heart's beating a little faster. <laughs> um, you know, sweating a little bit more. Um, you know, this is a new experience. Um, you know, being a, a first time head coach. Uh, but I'm definitely blessed to be a part of a, a program and a university and a community uh, like Purdue and West Lafayette and, and definitely blessed with the guys in the locker room and the staff uh, that fills our facility. And I can't wait to go, to go to battle with them on Saturday at noon. The biggest change is you're going from making suggestions to decisions. And you're going to have to do it quickly. We know you're going to do a great job, Ryan. Great to have you here, and we wish you nothing but luck, not only this Saturday, but the rest of this season. I appreciate you guys. All right. Thanks to, uh, tonight to our engineer, Wes Scott, our producer, Ethan Sargent. Uh, the video coordinated by Corey Palm Incorporated here. We have a whole team of people. Again, the Boilermakers and the Fresno State Bulldogs will kick it off. They've never met on the football field. They'll do it for the first time on Saturday at noon. We'll have the kickoff uh, action starting at 11 o'clock and our Facebook Live segment coming up at 1030. And again, we'll be right back here at Walk-Ons next Wednesday night for a next edition of the Ryan Walters Show. Uh, the Boilermakers looking to get off to a great start in this 100th season of football at ross Aid Stadium. So for Cadron Jenkins, for Marcus Bowe, and for the head coach, this is Tim Newton. You've been listening to the Ryan Walters Show on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Good night, everybody.